What if I told you the ticking clock on your wall, the calendar on your phone, the very sense of past, present, and future is a beautifully constructed illusion? We're not talking about some matrix-style simulation, but something far more fundamental, something woven into the very fabric of reality, or rather not woven in, because, according to theoretical physicist Carlo Rovelli, time, as we universally perceive it, doesn't exist at the most fundamental level. Before we can even begin to unravel the illusion of time, we need to understand how deeply it's woven into the fabric of our understanding. And to do that, we need to go back, back to the scientific revolution. It's easy to think of this period as simply a collection of discoveries, telescopes, microscopes, calculus, but it was far more profound. It was a fundamental shift in how we perceived reality itself, and at the very heart of that shift was time. For millennia, the dominant worldview was Aristotelian, geocentric. The earth was the center of the universe, unchanging, eternal. Time, in this context, was cyclical, tied to the celestial spheres, reflecting a divine, unchanging order. Think of the seasons, the predictable movements of the stars, a comforting, if ultimately inaccurate, picture. There was a sense of purpose embedded in time, a teleology, a direction dictated by the heavens. But then the cracks started to appear. Copernicus, with his heliocentric model, dared to suggest that the Earth wasn't the center. This wasn't just about astronomy. It was a challenge to the entire established order. It was heretical. Galileo, with his telescope, provided the observational evidence, confirming Copernicus's theory and further undermining the old cosmology. Imagine the intellectual upheaval. Centuries of accepted truth crumbling before their eyes. And it wasn't just about where things were in space, it was about how they moved. Aristotelian physics, with its emphasis on inherent properties and natural places, couldn't explain the observations. Why did objects fall at the same rate, regardless of their weight? Why did planets move in ellipses, not perfect circles? The old answers simply didn't work anymore. Then came Isaac Newton. And Newton... He didn't just answer these questions, he redefined the very framework of reality. With his laws of motion and universal gravitation, he gave us a universe that was mechanical, predictable, governed by laws that could be expressed mathematically. It was a breathtaking achievement. Suddenly, the seemingly chaotic movements of the heavens could be understood, predicted, with incredible accuracy. But here's the crucial point. At the very foundation of Newton's clockwork universe was the concept of absolute time. He defined it explicitly in his Principia. Absolute, true, and mathematical time, of itself and from its own nature, flows equably without relation to anything external. Let those words sink in. Absolute, true, mathematical, flowing equably without relation to anything external. This was a radical departure. Time was no longer cyclical, tied to the celestial spheres. It was linear, independent, a universal now shared by everything in the universe. Imagine a vast, invisible river flowing at a constant rate, carrying everything along with it. That was Newton's time, and it worked brilliantly. It allowed him to build a system of physics that explained everything from the falling of an apple to the orbits of the planets. This Newtonian concept of absolute time became deeply ingrained in our thinking, influencing not only physics, but also philosophy, theology, and even art. It provided a framework for understanding causality, for ordering events, for constructing narratives. It became common sense. The ticking clock, the passing seasons, the aging process, all seemed to confirm this relentless, unidirectional flow. But, and this is the key takeaway, Newton's absolute time, while incredibly useful while forming the bedrock of classical physics, was ultimately an assumption. A necessary assumption, perhaps, to build his system, but an assumption nonetheless, and as we'll see, it was an assumption that would eventually be... shattered. The scientific revolution was a transition to a mechanical, predictable universe described by mathematical laws, but it was fundamentally rooted in a concept of time this setup stage for the future. So we've established Newton's clockwork universe, ticking along with absolute, unwavering time. 
For over two centuries, this model reigned supreme. It shaped our understanding of the cosmos. It fueled the Industrial Revolution. It seemed unshakable. But even within this seemingly perfect system, there were hints of something more. Little anomalies, experimental results that didn't quite fit the Newtonian mold. And these anomalies would eventually lead to a revolution even more profound than the one Newton himself had initiated. One of the key cracks in the Newtonian edifice was the famous Michelson-Morley experiment. Scientists were trying to detect the luminiferous ether, a hypothetical medium through which light was thought to propagate. Much like sound waves travel through air, if this ether existed and the earth was moving through it, then the speed of light should be different depending on the direction of measurement. But the experiment found nothing. The speed of light was constant, regardless of the Earth's motion. This was baffling. This seemingly small discrepancy was a major blow to the prevailing theories. It suggested that something was fundamentally wrong with our understanding of space and time. And it would take a genius, a patent clerk named Albert Einstein, to truly understand the implications. In 1905, Einstein published his special theory of relativity, and this, this changed everything. He started with two fundamental postulates. First, the laws of physics are the same for all observers in uniform motion. Second, the speed of light in a vacuum is constant for all observers, regardless of the motion of the light source. These seemingly simple postulates had profound consequences. One of the most startling consequences was time dilation. Einstein showed that time is not absolute, as Newton had assumed. It's relative to the observer's motion. If you're moving at a significant fraction of the speed of light relative to me, your time will pass slower than mine. This isn't a matter of perception. It's a fundamental aspect of reality. Clocks actually tick slower at higher speeds. This has been experimentally verified with atomic clocks flown on high-speed jets. The difference is tiny in everyday life, but it's real. Then, in 1915, Einstein delivered his general theory of relativity, and this, this was even more radical. He showed that gravity isn't just a force, as Newton described it. It's the curvature of space-time itself. Mass and energy warp the fabric of space and time around them. Imagine a bowling ball placed on a stretched rubber sheet. It creates a dip, a curvature. That's what massive objects do to space-time. And this curvature affects the flow of time. Time passes slower in stronger gravitational fields. Near a massive object like a black hole, time dilation becomes extreme. This isn't just a theoretical concept. It's been measured. The GPS satellites orbiting Earth have to account for the difference in time flow between their altitude and the surface of the Earth. If they didn't, your GPS navigation would be off by miles within a day. So Einstein shattered Newton's absolute time. He replaced it with a dynamic, flexible space-time, where time is interwoven with space, and both are affected by motion and gravity. The river of time, which Newton saw as flowing straight and unwavering, turned out to be a winding, meandering stream, its flow varying depending on the landscape it traverses. But even with Einstein's revolutionary insights, the concept of a flow of time, however distorted, remained we still had a sense of past, present, and future, even if they weren't universally shared. It would take another leap, another delving into the strange realm of quantum mechanics, to challenge even that assumption. Einstein introduced a notion of space-time. The concept that space and time are interconnected and relative, that time is not absolute, and that gravity affects this concept. This was Einstein's relativity revolutionized our understanding of the large-scale universe, gravity, space-time, the cosmos. But there's another realm equally profound, equally strange, where the rules of relativity seem to break down. This is the realm of the incredibly small, the quantum world. Quantum mechanics, developed in the early 20th century, describes the behavior of matter and energy at the atomic and subatomic levels, and here, things get weird. Particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously, superposition. 
they can be entangled across vast distances, and their behavior is inherently probabilistic, not deterministic. The smooth, predictable world of classical physics gives way to a fuzzy, uncertain reality. But what does this have to do with time? Well, in the quantum world, the very concept of time as we understand it begins to unravel. It's not just that time is relative, as Einstein showed. It's that, at the most fundamental level, it might not even exist in the way we perceive it. One of the key challenges in modern physics is reconciling general relativity, our theory of gravity and the large-scale universe, with quantum mechanics, our theory of the very small. They're both incredibly successful in their respective domains, but they seem incompatible. When you try to apply quantum mechanics to gravity, you run into serious problems. One of these problems is the problem of time. The most striking example of this problem is the Wheeler-DeWitt equation. This equation is a cornerstone of quantum gravity, an attempt to describe the quantum state of the entire universe. It's a complex equation, but the crucial point is this. It contains no time variable. There's no T in the equation. It's a description of the universe without any reference to time at all. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that time doesn't exist in any sense. There are different interpretations of the Wheeler-DeWitt equation, but it strongly suggests that time, as a fundamental parameter, as a background against which events unfold, might not be a part of the ultimate description of reality. It's like trying to describe a painting without mentioning the canvas. The canvas is there, providing the background, but the image itself doesn't explicitly refer to it. Think of it like this. In classical physics, we have a clear distinction between before and after. Events happen in a definite sequence along a timeline, but in the quantum realm, this distinction becomes blurred. Superposition allows particles to exist in multiple states simultaneously. Entanglement allows particles to be linked in such a way that their fates are intertwined, regardless of the distance separating them, seemingly violating the notion of a causal sequence. It's like time, at least in the classical sense, becomes fractured. The absence of a time variable in the Wheeler-DeWitt equation is a profound puzzle. It forces us to question our most basic assumptions about the universe. Is time an emergent property, something that arises from more fundamental interactions? Is it a consequence of our particular perspective as macroscopic observers? Or is it something even more radical? This quantum challenge to the nature of time isn't simply a mathematical curiosity. It has deep philosophical implications. What does this mean for causality? What does mean for how a wave function collapses? It suggests that our intuitive understanding of time owned by our everyday experience might be a drastically simplified, perhaps even misleading, picture of reality. The clockwork universe, even the warped space-time of Einstein, might be just the surface of a much deeper, much stranger, timeless reality. And unraveling that mystery is one of the greatest challenges facing physics today. The Wheeler-DeWitt equation shows how quantum gravity leads to no reference of time. This is an enormous deal and a huge leap from Einstein. So we've seen how classical physics, even with Einstein's revolutions, clung to a notion of time, albeit a flexible one. And we've seen how quantum mechanics throws even that into question, hinting at a timeless fundamental reality. Now we turn to Carlo Rovelli and his work on loop quantum gravity a theory that attempts to bridge the gap between relativity and quantum mechanics, and in doing so, offers a radical new perspective on the nature of time. Rovelli is one of the leading figures in the field of quantum gravity. He's a proponent of loop quantum gravity, or LQG, which is one of the main contenders for a theory that can unify general relativity and quantum mechanics. And LQG has some very interesting things to say about time. The core idea of LQG is that space-time, the fabric of the universe, isn't smooth and continuous, as we usually imagine it. Instead, it's granular, made up of discrete, tiny loops. Think of it like a piece of fabric. From a distance, it looks smooth, continuous. But up close, you see the individual threads, the interwoven structure. LQG proposes that space-time is similar, 
but at a scale far, far smaller than anything we can currently observe directly, the Planck scale, around 10 to 35 meters. These loops are not in space and time, they are space and time. They are the fundamental building blocks of reality, the quanta of space-time. And the way these loops are interconnected, the way they weave together, determines the geometry of space-time, including gravity. Now, here's where it gets really interesting for our discussion of time. In LQG, there's no background time, no external clock ticking away. Time as a fundamental parameter doesn't exist at the level of these individual loops. It's not a basic ingredient of the universe. Instead, time emerges from the interactions of these loops. It's a consequence of the way these loops change and relate to each other. Think of it like temperature. Temperature isn't a fundamental property of a single molecule. A single molecule doesn't have a temperature. Temperature emerges from the average kinetic energy of a large number of molecules. Similarly, in LQG, Time emerges from the collective behavior of a vast number of these fundamental loops. This is a radical departure from both Newton's absolute time and Einstein's relative, but still flowing, time. In LQG, time is not a pre-existing stage upon which events unfold. It's a consequence of the events themselves, of the interactions of the fundamental constituents of space-time. Rovelli describes this as a timeless, fundamental reality. It's not that nothing happens, it's that the happening isn't ordered by an external universal clock. The universe, at its most fundamental level, is a network of interconnected events, not a sequence of events unfolding in time. So, how do we reconcile this with our everyday experience of time? Why do we perceive a clear distinction between past, present, and future? Why does time seem to flow in one direction? Ravelli's answer, as we'll explore in the next, lies in thermodynamics and our perspective as macroscopic observers. We're like creatures living on the surface of a vast, turbulent ocean, perceiving only the waves, not the complex currents and interactions happening far below. Our time is a consequence of our limited view, our interaction with a small, specific part of a much larger, timeless reality. Rovelli describes how time emerges from this timeless, fundamental reality due to the interactions of the loops. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. I love hearing from you, so drop a comment below and let's keep the conversation going. Share this video with your friends to help spread the word. Thank you.